Hey, this is Dalty Fast here, and in this video I will do an update to an older video I did about five years ago. And that video was to show you guys how to uh, solder and heat shrink wires together and also how to use butt connectors to join two wires together. Uh, mainly for automotive uh, installation, like if you're doing uh, car alarms or car stereo, or even if you have to fix uh, some existing wire in the vehicle. So hopefully this video uh, it's better than uh, the last one I did because this one's going to be recorded in HD and also the narration hopefully is going to be better than the last one. But uh, let's start off with the uh, soldering and heat shrinking of uh, a wire I have here. Now this example I'm using it. This wire here you're looking at it's I believe it's uh, 18 gauge and you may find something similar in a vehicle or when you're doing uh, some sort of installation with fog lights, stereos, uh, alarms. So let me go ahead and first um, cut this into two pieces so I can show you. So I have two pieces here. And the wire stripper I like to use is this type here. I bought this many years ago at Radio Shack you can uh, buy this I believe at uh, Home Depot and I don't know if uh, Radio Shack still sells it but this one I like because you just have to squeeze it once and it will strip the wire for you some of you may be familiar with this type of wire stripper and these ones have been around for a long time these are the manual type so basically you'll see the different holes for the gauges of the wire and you just put the wire into the proper gauge and you pull the wire and it will strip the insulation off. Let me first show you how this one is used. So for the 18 to 20 gauge I can put it over this hole right here okay, and give it a squeeze and what happens is that the back part will actually come down first and grab the wire. Okay, If I keep on squeezing then you'll see that the insulation is stripped off. And then once I release it, let's do the other side also. So again, put it over here, give it a squeeze. So I have both ends. Here I have my soldering iron and also some flux core solder. And what you want to do is wet a sponge with water and just clean off any contaminants. And then I like to tin the tip of the soldering iron. So what you want to do is that if you're going to solder these two wires together, there's a couple of ways. You can put them together and twist it like so. Solder it and they'll end up looking like this. Another way you can do if you're soldering these two together is basically kind of put them together like this. Just lay it flat. So what you want to do here is put the tip of the soldering iron, make sure it's hot, onto the copper conductor and then start feeding solder onto this. So here you see the two wires are now joined. Here I have different sizes of shrink tubing and typically what you want to do is order the diameter of the shrink tube to be about 30% larger than the diameter of the wire you're going to be putting shrink tube on. So I want to just show you that it does come in different sizes. Like for example this one is much smaller than say something like this. For this demonstration I'm going to use this one I'll cut a piece off here. 
So here's my shrink tube. I'll go ahead and slide this over and place it right in the middle. And typically what I like to use is just a lighter. You can use a uh, heat gun, but it takes too long. So just make sure you don't put the flame on it too long because it'll start melting the uh, heat shrink also. So as you're putting the flame on the heat shrink, just rotate it a little bit, move it around, don't stay in one spot. And you can see that it works very quickly. Let me show you another scenario you might run into when you're doing automotive install. Let's say, for example, that this red wire is an existing wire in the vehicle. And you want to tap onto this wire. Now, you can, of course, cut this in half, strip it, and then tap your new wire onto it. But that's difficult because if it's an existing wire, a lot of times there's no slack. And once you cut this off, there's really not a lot of room for you to join these back together and twist the wire together. You can use a T-tap. Uh, they make these T-taps that you can buy where it crimps onto this wire and then uh, you basically put a uh, connector onto this new wire and it plugs onto the existing wire and that's a T-tap. Here's another thing you can do. Using this wire stripper, put the wire, the existing wire, onto the stripper and again, we'll, we'll, we'll squeeze the wire stripper and then let go. And you'll see that now the copper inside is exposed. What you can do next is, with the new wire, strip the end off and wrap this over here like so. Now you're not done yet because this connection can fail. So what you want to do is get your soldering iron and put the tip on the copper and feed solder into this. So now you have this connection but you have the conductor exposed which is not good so you need to insulate this. What I would do is get some electrical tape wrap it around and one additional step I like to do to make sure that this electrical tape won't unravel over time is to get yourself a tie wrap and put it right on the spot where you had the soldering done earlier and then we'll clip this off so this is one method you can use to securely tap onto existing wire without using a T-tap Here I will show you how to join two wires together using butt connectors. The connectors you see here right now with the different colors represent different gauges of wire you'll use. So here are the ends of the red, blue, and yellow. So they're meant for different gauge of wiring that you'll be connecting. So I'll go ahead and strip one end on this white wire. And I'll strip the end of this red wire. Now to crimp these butt connectors, I like using this crimper. It has a lot of leverage. It's very easy to use. Compared to this one, where you do have the insulated uh, butt connector crimper also here, but it just doesn't work as well, I find. So let me grab this one here. And what you want to do is put it right at the end here. Okay, don't squeeze this at this point, all right? Because if you squeeze it right now, then that's going to be used up. So 
go ahead and twist the copper conductor and I feed this into one end like this and then just squeeze and then release it so this end is done we'll go ahead and put the white wire into here and we'll just squeeze this crimper release it So now these two wires are joined. It's very strong. And it's also insulated. So let me show you another situation you might run into where you want to join one wire to multiple wires. And here I'll show you that you can use a larger butt connector. And what I'll do is on this end where I only have one wire, I'll strip a longer length go ahead and twist it and then what I'll do is because this gauge for the fitting is quite big compared to the conductor of this wire I'll go ahead and bend this in half as you see here and then I will put this one end into here We'll crimp this end. So here you see this side is crimped on, it's secure. For the two wires on the other side, what I want to do is strip the ends and then twist them together and then put this into here. Now you can have, you know, two, three, four wires if you want. So feed those wires in here, put the crimper on, and we'll go ahead and squeeze the crimper, release it, and now you see this one wire is now joining these two wires. So there you go. I hope you found this video to be helpful and if you have any questions leave a comment below and if you like the video please subscribe. Thank you.